O God, who calls the minds of the faithful to unite in a single purpose, grant your people to love what you command and to desire what you promise, that amid the uncertainties of this world, our hearts may be fixed on that place where true gladness is found. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord to Shema, master of the palace, I will thrust you from your office and pull you down from your station. On that day, I will summon my servant, Elikim, son of Hilakai. I will close him with your robe and grid him with your sash and give over to him your authority. He shall be the father of the inhabitants of Jerusalem and to the house of Judea. I will place the key of the house of David on Elikim's shoulder when he opens no one shall shut. When he shuts, no one shall open. I will fix him like a peg in a sure spot to be a place of honor for his family. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Oh, the depth of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God. How inscrutable are his judgments and how unsearchable his ways. For who has known the mind of the Lord? Or who has been his counselor? Or who has given the Lord anything that he may be repaid? For from him and through him and for him are all things. To him be glory forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Jesus went into the region of Caesarea Philippi, and he asked his disciples, Who do people say the Son of Man is? They replied, Some say John the Baptist, others Elijah, still others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter stepped and replied, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus said to him in reply, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood is not revealed this to you, but by heavenly Father. And so I say to you, you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of another world shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatever you lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Then he strictly ordered his disciples to tell no one that he was the Christ. The Gospel of the Lord. Thank you for coming to attend the Mass. Slowly, slowly, you have the confidence to come to the church. So we are trying our best to help protect one another and trying to find, follow the guidelines. And today's liturgy is reminding us about the virtue of humility. Sometimes when a person has achieved higher education like masteral, doctorate, and other titles, sometimes there is always the tendency and temptation to be so proud of oneself. Today's first reading from the book of prophet Isaiah 
We heard about this person Shebna. He was the master of the house of Israel. So that's a very high position in the king's administration. So he was a servant of God, but then he became so proud of himself. He even prepared a tomb for him where the nobles would be buried. That's why Prophet Isaiah was sent to prophesy to him. You saw the prophets, they prophesied before the people of Israel. But there are occasions prophets will tell the message of God to an individual. So today we hear the prophet Isaiah was telling his master of the house, Shepna, that he will be taken from that position. God will pull him down because he became so proud of himself and replaced him with another person, Eliakim. So that's a lesson learned for a person who became so proud of himself, forgetting that everything is given to him by God. And today's second reading, Paul reminds us about the humility. Because Paul, he was a Pharisee, he was educated at the feet of Gamaliel, famous rabbi during the time. And because of him, he was able to preach the message of the risen Lord to the Gentiles. And he was so successful in his missionary journeys. It's all because of the grace coming from God. And he's confronted with God's greatness. Today, we hear telling him, who can pardon? Who can equal the wisdom coming from God? Nobody could equal the wisdom coming from God. That's why towards the end, we just give praise and glory to Jesus Christ. Even though he was so successful, but before God, he was nothing before God. So Paul was so humble to accept that. And finally, in today's gospel, we hear about the confession of Peter about the identity of Jesus. You know, after quite some time, after the 12 disciples following our Lord, they have experience with their own eyes, they hear what Jesus was teaching, and they ask this question when they reach to the place originally called Sister Philippi. He asked this question to them. Who do people say that I am? And the answers came. Some said you are Elijah. Some said you are John the Baptist. Others would also say you are Jeremiah. So that was a very good reputation of the identity of Jesus. Because Elijah, Jeremiah, John the Baptist, they were true prophets of God. But Jesus was concerned by another, asking another question. But who do you say that I am? So that was a personal question directed to each of the 12 apostles. And Peter said, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus responded, blessed are you, Peter, because it's not the flesh and blood that has revealed to you, about my true identity, but it was my heavenly Father who has revealed to you. So it was through the grace of God the Father that Peter was able to understand the true identity of our Jesus, that indeed he is the one 
that the people of Israel have been waiting for generations and generations. And it was God, the Father who has revealed that to us. Because of that gift of that rock, we heard that faith that Peter received from God the Father. He was appointed to be the leader of the first Christian community. Now we consider that person as a Pope. So we could consider Peter was the first Pope. And to generation for the last 20, 2,000 years, so many successors from Peter. And all the successors, they have to be humble. Like Peter who was gifted with the grace to know the true identity of our Lord Jesus. So my dear brothers and sisters, we have been Christians, it depends on our ages. We have attended masses, we have heard the gospel. So I think the question that we have to ask today is the same. Who do you say that I am? So today Jesus is asking us the same question. Who do you say that I am? What is our answer to that question? Because that's very, very important. Because if we have known Jesus truly as He is, we are able to mirror Jesus in our life. By virtue of baptism, that should be our call to follow the footsteps of our Lord Jesus, to mirror Jesus in our life. In other words, to be a living witness of our Lord. That's why we have always to humble ourselves. Because there's no reason why we have to be so proud of ourselves. Because before God, we are nothing. We are just poor sinners. The reason why we are here is because we beg the mercy of God. We beg His grace in order for us to continue our journey. We are here because we like to be noticed by the words. We are here because we want to be noticed by the sacrament of the Holy Eucharist to strengthen us, to nourish us so that we are able to continue our journey faithfully. So I think that's a very question that, or very important question that we have to ponder as we celebrate the liturgy today. Who is Jesus in our life? Because it will depend how we live our lives, especially with our relationship with one another. If we have understood who is Jesus and we are able to live His teachings that is based on love, mercy, and compassion, and like Peter, we are able to receive that gift, that wisdom. We are able to be a living witness of our Lord. On our own, we cannot do that. But like Paul, we have always to humble ourselves. Because before God, we can never understand can never comprehend because we're just a mere tiny creature. Every Ash Wednesday, we are reminded when we receive the ashes on our forehead, remember, remember your task and to dust your sanitary. Even though we are so successful in our world today, we have receive a lot of material things, but towards the end, when the moment will come, God will come to us, will call us, we'll just leave everything. And the only thing we'll bring is our humble soul. Nothing else. That's why we have always to pray to God for the grace 
to always to be humble and always put all the credits to our ever loving God. Because on our own, we are nothing. With God's help, with God's grace, everything is possible. And we become great. Not because of us, it's because of the grace of God. Amen. Let's now start to profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe one Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son of God, born of the Father of all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. To him all things were made, for us men of our salvation came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnated the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake was crucified under Pontius Pilate, and suffered death and was buried, and rose again the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures, ascended into heaven, and seated at the right hand of the Father, who come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. His kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for forgiveness of sins and look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life of the world to come. Amen. Let us make our kids known to God the Father who guides our loves and cares for us in all our anxieties. That the leaders of the church may follow the Lord with their hearts, with all their strength, and with all their might. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We ask our Lord to strengthen our faith and help practice and help us practice it daily let us pray to the lord lord hear our prayer that we may realize that god gives us the greatest proof of his love in the abiding presence of the blessed sacrament let us pray to the lord lord hear our prayer for the sick of our community that they may that in their suffering they may rely more ever on Jesus. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We remember our dead who have gone before us, marked with the sign of faith. May they rest in peace, especially Sean L. Fullen, for which this Mass is offered. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the attention that we hold in the silence of our hearts. Let's pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, create within us the sincerity of hearts so that you may love and respect others as you treasure them. We make our prayer to Christ our Lord. You may remain in your seat during the offertory. The ushers will collect envelopes and offerings. There can be no sign of peace or touching outside of the family unit. Allow persons to move out of the pew to maintain physical distancing as you exit and re-enter the pew. To receive communion, the usher will sanitize your hands and direct you into the aisle. Communion is received in your flat hand only. Then move to the side and place the host in your mouth. Recover your mouth and nose as you return to your seat. Thank you.
Primary sisters and brothers must sacrifice and yours were acceptable to God the Almighty Father. O Lord, who gained for yourself a people by adoption to the one sacrifice offered once for all, bestow graciously on us, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace in your church to Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It's truly right and just our good and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty Eternal God, to Christ our Lord, who by His birth He brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by His suffering cancelled out our sins. By His rising from the dead, He has opened the way to eternal life, and by ascending to you, O Father, He has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so, with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim.
as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, His wondrous resurrection and ascension to heaven. And as we look forward to the second coming, we offer you thanksgiving this holy living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim of his death, you will reconcile us yourself, and that we were nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one Spirit in Christ. We make of our eternal offering to you so that you may obtain an inheritance with your life, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, as a Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles, glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, whom whose constant intercession in your presence we live for unfailing love. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confer with great charity the Pilgrim Church on Earth, with your servant, Francis R. Pope, and Robert R. Bishop, all your bishops, all the clergy, then their people have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom we have summoned before you. In your compassion, merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered to all the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and all who listen to you. At their passing from this life, give kind of return to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of the glory to Christ our Lord, to whom we bestow in the world all that is good. Through Him and with Him and in Him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Give us this day of daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And let us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. To the us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope of the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said the apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but the faith of the church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold Him, who takes away the sins in the world. Blessed are those called the Supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy to enter under my roof, and only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Father Christ, we say, turn thy name. Amen. spiritual communion for those who are attending Mass in their homes through the website or through the YouTube. My Jesus, I believe that you are a person of the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things. I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at this spiritual into my heart. I embrace you as if you have already come. I invite myself holy to you. Never permit me to be separate from you. Amen.
Let us pray. Complete within us, O Lord, we pray, the healing work of your mercy, and graciously perfect and sustain us, so that in all things we may please you, through Christ our Lord. So this is it for announcement. Dear St. Dominic Parishioners, the Bishop's Annual Appeal began July 12th and you were invited to support this essential ministries and shared services of the diocese. Our parish share of the $6.85 million, um, the Columbus Diocese goal is $27,745.60. Which is slightly less than last year. Any amount received exceeding our goal comes back to St. Dominic's. Our parish has 307 registered families, with 78 families contributing to the Bishop's Annual Appeal in 2019. No pledge is too small, and your contribution can be done in installments over the next year. Because most of us have not been attending Mass in person because of COVID-19, 
The Bishop's Annual Appeal Pledge Envelope has been mailed to you. The Bishop's Annual Appeal may be donated in these ways. You may mail your com completed pledge envelope directly to the address on the envelope. You may go online to the Columbus Catholic Giving or to make a secure pledge or gift. We know there are many obligations and concerns facing everyone during this pandemic. Please consider supporting the ministries and programs made possible through the generosity of people of faith. Also consider the blessings you have received and then reflect on how you may give them back through your time, talent, and treasure. If it is up to us to take care of St. Dominic's, blessings and safety to all, Michael and Juana Austin, the Bishop's Annual Appeal representatives. The Catholic Times, the Diocese of Columbus newspaper, is introducing eConnect, a new email news service. eConnect will be mailed to subscribers bi-weekly on Wednesday with current news and with any breaking news to keep you up to date about the events and activities throughout the diocese. To sign up for your free subscription to eConnect, please visit columbuscatholic.org backslash eConnect. September adoration is canceled. The next adorations will be on Tuesday, October 13th. And greetings to everyone. The St. Dominic's Church Garden Committee would like to invite you to share in our fall harvest. Each week after Mass from now through November, there will be fresh produce available in the garden. The herbs, fruits, and vegetables were grown organically here on the church grounds. Please come and partake of some of the good natural food after receiving your good spiritual meal. Please follow the church protocol for social distancing outdoors. Thank you. You may exit through the front doors and the north or south doors of the church. Continue to maintain social distancing as you exit your pew and the church. You may remove your mask after you exit the church. Thank you. So thank you for coming to attend the mass. And also I'd like to thank those who are attending mass to their, in their homes through our website. And at the end of the Mass, we pray, Our Father, help Mary glory be for increased vocations for religious life and priesthood life, and also for a persevere those who have called to write. Please all stand for the final blessing. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us go in peace and love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.